Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiruhu wa nukminu bihi as a wajal. Ashahadu wa la ilaha illallahu wahduhu la sharika lah. Wa ashadu anna sayyidina muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa alla alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Ya ayyuha ladhina amanu taqku lahe haqqa tukatihi. Wa la tamu tunna ila wa antum muslimun. And that is, with Allah's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. The perfect praise belongs to Allah, the guardian evolver, the cherisher, the sustainer, the keeper, uh, the keeper and sustainer of all systems of knowledge. We render all praise to him, and we seek his help, and we beg for his forgiveness for our obvious shortcomings. Mighty and sublime is he. I openly testify that there is no deity worthy of worship but Allah alone, the one and only. And he has no partners, and he has no heirs to his throne. And this is verified in the Holy Quran, Kareem, where it states that Allah, the merciful benefactor, is firmly established on the throne of authority. And then we, openly, we also openly testify that Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the last messenger of Allah. And he is a gift, the gift that we graciously accept from Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, blessed the earth with our Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the world immediately benefited from his being born. You know, out of all the prophets, the world benefited most from his birth. Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that many prophets were, born, were, were uh, sent, here to, sent here to their individual people, but I was sent for all of mankind. And then the Holy Quran, Kareem, it also reminds us as to the validity of his prophethood. It says, Rasul Allahi wa Khatma and Nabi'in, that he is the messenger of Allah and the seal of the prophets. So we ask that Allah's peace, his blessings, and his highest exaltations be on Muhammad, his Sahaba, his family, the righteous all, all you Muslims be peace. Assalamu alaikum. All you who believe, fear Allah as he should be feared. And die not, except as a Muslim willfully submitting to his will. Uh, the Holy Quran tells us, it says, Ya ayu halatina amanu, itta nudiya lissilati min yawm il jumu'ati, faisal ila tikra lahi wahtaru bayya, thalikum khairu laikum in kuntum ta alamun. It says, O you who believe, when the call is proclaimed to prayer on Friday, hasten earnestly to the remembrance of Allah and leave off business that is best for you if you but knew. And then, after that, it goes on to say, And when the prayer is finished, disperse through the land. Sadaq Allah, who theme Allah, the mighty spoke the truth. And we want to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing us to be here to honor our obligations as believing men and believing women on this Jumat day. This is, this is Jumat Akbar. This, this is a great congregation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his totally awesome will has given us Friday because Friday is consistent with the day that our father Adam alayhi salam was born. Friday was also a day that it was said that our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he received wahi on that day. He received revelation on that day. And Friday is also a day that our fitra nature uh, was upgraded. It was upgraded. And man's intellect was given rise to. It was given rise to a meaningful purpose, you know, giving us a meaningful purpose while we were here on this earth. So we wasn't just here, just walking around, doing nothing. We had purpose. It's a purpose why we're here. And the chief purpose, one of the chief purposes why we are here on this earth is to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every day of our life. 
Nothing else comes first, brothers and sisters. Not our jobs, not our spouses, not our buddies, not our iPhones. None of these things are important. On this, on, none of these come before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this day isn't just a day for um, rest or a day to kick back. You know, this, is, this, this, this day here, this is a time to be re-energized with ruh, with the spirit. You know, so that, we, so that we can equip ourselves to go back into this unforgiving world in this dunya and live while at the same time holding on to our Islam and the Tawheed, you know, the oneness of Allah. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us in the Quran, he says to remember me and I'll remember you. Now, we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every day, every day on the hour. Most, most Muslims, you know, most believing people, but Muslims in particular, we remember, we remember him every day on the hour. But this day, this day in particular, is a day of super remembrance. You know, super remembrance. And the benefit of being here on this day is your prayers are worth more. Your prayers are worth more on this day than any other day. You know, so um, your transgressions on this day, your, your transgressions on this day are all forgiven if you are, if you are sincere, you know. So understand that this day also is the beginning of the human spiritual process. And just like our, our uh, physical bodies had to be fed, you know, our spirits had to be fed also. You know, so does the spirit. Because if you, you want to have a balanced life, if you want to have a balanced life, you have to feed the spirit. You know, and just like the body, if the, if the spirit is not fed, it can come under starvation, famine, and eventually death. You know how we see uh, some people out here, they... They, um, their body is, the body is here, the body is moving, the arms working, the legs working, they're talking, they can see things, all their five senses are working, but spiritually they're dead. So that translates into a dead man walking. That's all that is. So, you have, so we, have to, we have to feed the spirit also. Look, um, dear brothers and sisters, uh, in our short time that we had together, I want to um, discuss um, the importance of the women in our deen today. You know, I, I want to talk about, you know, I want to talk about the historical importance that the woman has played and how, and how this should relate to how we should treat the women today. And I know that I won't be able to cover all of the, you know, the different nuances. There's so many things concerning the women, but uh, inshallah, we'll try to get through, we'll try to tackle a few of them. But one of the first women in religion that I want to talk about is Mary, you know, um, daughter of Imran or mother of Isa, alayhi salam. And uh, the Quran says, the Quran says, O oh Mary, Allah has chosen you, purified you, chosen you above the women of all nations. O oh Mary, worship your Lord devoutly, prostrate yourself, and bow down in prayer with those who bow down. Now, Anybody that knows Murray, which is probably basically all of us, we know that Murray is a woman who is held in, high, in, in very high regard in all of Scripture. You know, any, any, of the, any of the Scriptures that you look at, they would probably be incomplete if you didn't mention Murray. You know? You know, but none can deny, none can deny that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did a monumental thing for Murray when he directed the angel Jabril, alayhi salam, to visit her with the news of being the mother of one of the greatest prophets ever. The Quran says, Behold, the angel said, O Murray, Allah gives you tidings of a word from him, and his name will be Isa ibn Maryam, held in high honor in this world and the next, and the company of those who are nearest to Allah. He shall speak to the people in childhood and in maturity. And he shall be of the company of the righteous. She said, Oh my Lord, how shall I have a son when no man has touched me? He said, Even so. Allah creates what he wills. When he has decreed a plan, he but says to it, Be, and it is. He says, Cool, fire, cool. So, you see, Mary was not like any other woman because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had her under his divine protection ever since she was a little girl. 
And um, when you read the Quran, you'll see that at a certain point it mentioned that, um, that her father had came into the room and, she's, and he seen that she was supplied with sustenance by Allah. Now, for the sake of time, I'm just moving this story, moving these stories along, but we'll get the gist of it. But at a certain point, Mary began to show signs of pregnancy. So she left her family for a while, you know, for a time, and then she, did, and she didn't come back until she had the baby. And, you know, one of the reasons that I was surmised that she left is because, you know, she, had, it, it, she didn't have a husband to say that was, that, that was his baby, you know. So she didn't have that, so she left, you know, she left. Um, the people, you know, and then at a certain point she came back. Now, when she came back, she had the baby with her. She had Issa, a lady salon, with her. And um, when the people seen this, you know, they couldn't accept that. They could, the way the culture is now and the way it was now, people still can't accept that. You know, where's the, where's the father? So well, he, just popped, he just had the baby. What happened? What's going on? Tell us something, you know. But, the, again, the people, they couldn't accept that. And they said, oh, Murray, what truly an amazing thing thou hast brought us. O oh, sister of Ern, thy father was not a man of evil or thy mother a woman unchaste. So that's telling us that the people rejected her at that point, you know, because they weren't privy to certain uh, information concerning the birth of Issa, alayhi salam. So, again, you know how they do. People, they start talking. They start backbiting. You know, they start saying things about the woman that, that, they, that they don't have no information on, you know, making the woman feel bad. They don't know the situation. But Murray, Murray, being innocent as she was, she did something. She pointed to the baby. She pointed to Issa. And, and in the Quran, it tells you that, that, that Issa spoke to them. He said this. He said, I am indeed a servant of Allah. He has given me revelation, and he has made me a prophet, and he has made me blessed wheresoever I be, and he has enjoined me prayer and charity as long as I live. He has made me kind to my mother and not overbearing or miserable. So peace is on me the day I was born, the day that I die, and the day I should be raised up to life again. So, now, Issa, alayhi salam, he did what any right-thinking person who loves his mother would do, you know. If, if you got any sense, even if you're not the, the, the toughest guy, even if you, the, you may be the smallest, you know, if somebody disrespect your mother, you're going to feel compelled to speak up for, right? So, you know, most of we have an aversion to somebody saying something bad about our mother, you know. So, so and, and Jesus wasn't, wasn't any different. But um, the thing about him, based on... The, the, the Quran that when he, when he said this, he spoke to her as an infant. Now, you may get a baby to say a word or two in their first year of life, but, but Issa, in this situation, in, in this situation, he took on the role as a lawyer for his mother. You know, he was the lawyer for his mother, and he spoke out in her defense. Understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he put the same protection on her. By giving her Issa, if Issa, alayhi salam, that he gives to, the, to the, all the other prophets. And she's a woman. So this, 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 is, this is critical. She's a woman, you know. Can you see the importance that she plays in our world, brothers and sisters? Can you see that? Can you see the importance that she plays in our religious life and in our spiritual development? She, she's a critical person. But yet, she is a woman who, despite... You know, her good character, despite the good character that she had all through her life, she was um, questioned and frowned upon by the people because of this baby. But in the vindication of Sister Miriam, what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do? Again, he is showing us in the Holy Quran Kareem how important she is because he named a chapter or a surah after her. It's called Miriam. That's surah 19 and it has 98 ayats in it, you know dedicated to, to Miriam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did this again so that we can see the importance, the great importance that he put on her. Our brothers and sisters, we must understand that the Quran should not be looked at as just a holy book, right? You know, a, a spiritual book, right? 
you know, that was given to the Muslims. You know, that's really, you know, in, in the grand scheme of things, that's really an elementary way of looking at it, you know. It's, you, it's just a book, you know. Um, but that's, that, that's an elementary way of viewing these scriptures that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. But we should look at the Quran as the exact words of Allah that were given to us, not just for our spiritual growth, you know, not just for our spiritual growth, but, um, you know, for, our, for our, 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 our physical growth also, you know. You know, we should, we, sh we should be trying to get the spiritual growth and the physical, physical growth that, that emanates the, the light of Allah, you know. But for the growth in our physical self, you know, when we have that growth in our physical self, that, that's the growth that should bring us, ultimately that should bring us back to the, to the fitra nature that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us in. So, so it's like it, it, it goes around. It, it all connects. The spiritual life connects with your physical life. If you have a good spiritual life, that should show in your, in your physical life, you know. And then you shouldn't be a, a, a dead man walking. When we see you, like when people used to see the prophet, they say the light, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they say the light used to, used to come from him. They could see the light in him, you know. Without even knowing who he was, they knew he was somebody different. You know, he wasn't like everybody else, you know. And I'm mentioning this because at some point in a human existence, and in the times of the Jahiliya times, right, we forgot our purpose. You know, uh, we forgot what it means to be human beings. You know, what it means to display random acts of kindness and equality. You know, or showing love for your, your fellow man and loving and appreciating Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and, um, and his creation. You know, we have been, as, as we say, we, we have been dull in. You know, we have been dull in. You know, we have been serial transgressors in all of these areas. Or, 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 or like, like, like my friend said, we have been habitual line steppers. You know, we, we've, been, we've been going so wrong for, for a very long time. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful. He's merciful. You know, it was reported that when he created the earth, he looked at it and he, and he said that my mercy overrides my anger. So he's merciful. Now, the question is, do we accept his mercy? You know, do we accept his mercy? And, and, and he's merciful, merciful to us. Why? Because we forget how to act sometimes, you know. And he knows that our brains short circuit sometimes. You know, I see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he already knows these things, you know. And he knows that, that, that we, all, and a lot of times we give it to our carnal selves, you know, our lower selves. He knows we're going to be subject to these things. That's why he has given us this beautiful example and the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, as a reference point, you know, for us. And he has, and he has given us our kitab, the book, as a study guide and a tool to help us remember what's important in this physical and spiritual life. You know, the Holy, Holy Quran Kareem was put in place simply to revive a dead civilization and bring that dead human civilization back into the totality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why it was, it, was, it was created. You know, man was dead at that point before our Rasul bought Wahi, before he bought the revelation. And that's important to know. You know, that's important to know because we can say, out of, we can say things out of, our, out of our minds and we can display actions that, you know, the actions that we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. You know, we can show these things, we can say these things, but yet, and we don't see them, we never knew them, we never touched them, but yet we can't even, you know, be kind to one another, you know. We can't, we can't be kind to one another, we don't know how to treat each other, you know. And women, and, and that goes for the, how the men treat the women especially, because that's really what I'm, what I'm talking about, you know. We love our law, we love the prophet, but we can't even treat the women correctly. We can't treat them fairly. You know, we don't know how to deal with the woman, the women. And it's reported that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this. He said that Maryam, daughter of Imran, Lady Khadijah, Radiallahu Anha, the Prophet's first, who was the Prophet's first wife and the first woman to accept Islam, you know, Asiya, the wife of Pharaoh, and Fatima, the daughter of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they were all considered to be women of Jannah. You know, so we call them the four righteous women. Now, moving on, I want to talk about another person in religion, you know, and her name is Hagar. You know, Hagar was another important woman in religion 
who was treated as an outcast amongst her community. You know, now her situation was a little different than Murray's because Murray was in a better situation because she wasn't considered a slave, you know, or, or uh, um, a, a maid or anything like that. You know, and also Murray, she, she distanced her own self, you know, from her own people because she feared what the people would think, even though they ended up thinking it anyway, so she was right, you know. Um, Hagar was a servant to Ibrahim, alayhi salam, and his, and his wife Sarah. Um, now, Sarah had gotten to the age where she couldn't bear children, right? Um, so she let Ibrahim marry Hagar so that she could have a child for him. Well, as time went on, again, pregnancy comes, right? The rigors of pregnancy, you know, uh, kicked in. And it, was, it said that Ibrahim, alayhi salam, he started paying too much attention to his slave wife, you know? Now, as the story goes, Sarah made Hagar leave the house. So what was Ibrahim to do? He had to leave with her because he couldn't have her out there on his own, on her own, pregnant with a baby, you know, like some men do, right? So as time, as time went on, right, we know that Hagar had the baby, right? And the baby's name was Ishmael, alayhi salam. And also, you know, at that same time, you know, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he had received his mission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he had to leave. He had to leave Hagar. He had to leave them. And it says that he left them in a desert alone where they stayed for, for a time. At a certain point, they ran out of food. So Hagar, she panicked. You know, she panicked. And um, she started running around. They say that she started running around the hills of, of Safwa and Mawa back and forth looking for sustenance, right? And she prayed, she prayed so much, she prayed so much until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered her prayers, and as a result of that prayer, he showed her the, the Zamzam well. Up the, 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 the Zamzam well sprung up. And this well that sprung up, this Zamzam well, we know that this is a miracle. This is a miracle because it still pumps to this day. You know, it's a, a lot of y'all in here that have been on hard, and, and, and you can attest to that, that this well is pumping, you know, in a desert. Now, Hagar is a slave woman. She had a prophet husband, Ibrahim, and she had a prophet son. And she was cast out of her environment, you know, for obvious reasons. Some of, some of them reasons which was accepted because of her status. You know, now with all of that, she turned out to be a woman who, regardless of what, you or what me, you or anybody thought of her, you know, has we, we have to commemorate her, you know. Again, anybody that's ever been on Hajj, you know that when you go through the rituals of going back and forth through the through the Mount Safwa and Mawa, that you are doing that just as she did. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed her, brothers and sisters, with his protection in the wilderness and made her experience that experience that she went to went through unforgettable. You can't forget her. You can't go to Hodge and not know anything about her. You know, it's, it's not going to happen. But you see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala works. This story, or these stories, they, they, they should be an inspiration for women worldwide. Because the, because the way society portrays women and treats them is indicative of the attitude that they had during the Jahiliya times when they were killing the baby girls and treating the women so badly, you know. The women had no value. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has shown us through these women how important they are to civilization because despite what has happened to women throughout history, you know, the, the, despite how badly they were treated, despite how they were, they, badly they were treated uh, physically and mentally, they still outnumber the men. It's actually more women in the world than it is men, you know. You know so really to be successful... In, in your communities, you have to involve the women, you know, because how, you, how, you, how would you move forward, you know? But that was ignorant thinking during those times. Unfortunately, it's still like that. You know, there's still some ignorant thinking. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, again, he has made the woman important. And he has told, shown us through, through the Quran that if you take the woman out of it, you won't move forward. Let's make dua. Allahu Akbar.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمدا رسول الله um, the quran says arajul kawmun ala nisa'i he says that the men are the protectors of the women we look at this ayat um, and we readily assume that this makes the woman subservient to us some of us we we take the um the we take that text or we take that position to um hold the woman hostage literally you know to literally hold the woman hostage you know i I've, i've heard talks of women who are so fed up with their husbands and the way that their husbands are treating them that 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 they at the point they can't take it anymore you know they 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 want to get out of it you know they they want to get out of it you know they can't take it uh there was one situation where this um one muslim made his wife leave the house every day before he went to work or when he went to work now so she couldn't stay in the house when he was at work and sometimes whatever he was doing in the street he wouldn't come in the house till late at night what well, that means that this sister had to stay out of the house she couldn't get back in so and on top of that she had a 5 year old baby she had a 5 year old baby also now where and maybe it's me but where is the protection in that you know you know where 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 is he protecting his wife if she just sitting out in the street at a bus station or something like that that's not protection that's not how you treat the woman you know we we have to get out of this this type of thinking brothers you know for those of us who are in that type of thinking we have to get out of that you know because al islam it liberates the woman you know it liberates the woman it it, it doesn't oppress her prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was the first one to liberate women and institute women's rights if you look at the history nobody did this before him he is the one who stood up and said that the woman is equal to the man you know and the women they they are they are um and we all created from one soul too right so we all we all subject to the same things you know we 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 have they they have to have faith just as strong as ours you know they have to have e ihsan iman you know they they have to have the deen they have to have the same things that we have you know regardless of how people treat women or how these other cultures treat women we shouldn't ever be following that because the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam didn't do that you know there are countries right now where women they can't even drive a car you know they are allowed to make money they can't even make money like lady khadija radiyallahu anha did who was a business woman they won't even they can't make money you know she was making money before she was even married to the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam you know they are allowed to read books in some places we remember it was a time when the sister got um shot because she wanted to read the quran you prevent these women from being knowledgeable and scholars but then you forget that lady aisha radiyallahu anha she was a scholar you know a lot of the islamic uh rulings come from her her hadith the hadith that she got from the prophet peace be upon him you know she knew over 2500 hadiths you know and all of them all of the sahaba they had to come to her you know they had to come to her you know um but um and or or what about this they may be killed you know they had some women that may be killed because they speak out against justice injustice and again that was going on then and it's going on now in 2015 and prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam you know we need to look at his example we need to really look at his example because I, because a lot of us we missing it you know but just look at how he dealt with the women look at how how the, how the women dealt with him prophet muhammad his wives his wives were called the mothers of the believers that that was that was the the name that the title that they had now do you think that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have blessed our prophet with these women as examples if he thought that after this beautiful example that we could disrespect them i mean he has named surahs after women like i say he has he has uh, maryam and he has um surah four nisa you know the women and then let's not forget that the prophet peace be upon him his whole life was surrounded and supported by women from the cradle to the grave 
from the time he was lit, um, born to the time he died. And they were all instrumental in his development. There was one woman, and, 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 and I'm getting ready to close it up. Um, her name was Um Amen. Some call her Baraka. Right? Some call her Baraka. Um, she was the, now, it's interesting with Baraka because she was the only woman who was with the prophet, peace be upon him, from the time he took his first breath until the time he took his last breath. The only woman. You know, you'll find no other woman in history who was around as long as her. You know, she was with him his whole life. And you know what he called her? You know the affectionate term that he called her? He called her Umi. He called her my mother. That's what he called her. He said, my mother. But even with that, some of you in here, you disrespect your mother. Some of you in here, you disrespect the women and your sisters, your aunts, whoever. You disrespect them, you know, and it shows. That translates into how you treat your, the, the women and how the women are looked at in society. Just because of the way you treat them. But what you need to realize, you know, especially when it comes to your mother, that, that your mother is like Baraka. You know, she, she, Baraka represents what our mother is. You know, she took care of you when you were a baby, and she sacrificed for you, you know, even when she didn't have it. You know, she did the best she, she could with you. You know, when some of us go, keep going to jail, you know, she, you call your mother. But, and when you die, most likely she'll be the one to bury you, you know. But, 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 but how do you thank her? You thank her by calling her a kaffir. I know people that call their mother a kaffir. You must be crazy. How you gonna call your mother a kaffir? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, don't call anyone a disbeliever unless you become a disbeliever yourself. And then he also said that paradise lies at the feet of the mother. And that mother is any woman, because any woman has the potential to be a mother, right? So he's talking about all of them. But brothers, um, lastly, I'll say this, that during the times of war, right, women were the maintainers of the societies when the, when the men used to go to war. So women were actually the legs of the society because the men were gone out fighting all the time. Um, she was the homemaker. She was, she was the teacher, you know, the mother, etc. But now you look at it, that role is really, it's, it's funny because she's still doing those things, but it's, it's been a reversal on the men's side. Because now you have, you know, now you have women out here working while a lot of the men are sitting at home so-called studying their dean, you know? <laughs> You, you know, the, the welfare offices are filled with more win, men than women, you know, because you're trying to get over, you know, but yet you want to disrespect the woman, you know. These women, all those women over there, they are in Jumat today because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has willed it to be that way, right? He has willed it to be that way. But, but, but even with that, even with that, some of, some of us in here, we are so arrogant. The men, we are so arrogant and we are so conceited that we, that we act like they're not even here, you know. We act like they're not even here. Yet most of y'all know me. I'm out there most of the time, you know, and I got to direct traffic. Y'all running all over the women, you know. Won't let them walk through. You know, you come in here with your, some of you come in here, I gotta, we got to keep constantly telling the brother, man, pull your pants up, you know, um, uh, uh, don't, don't, don't dress like that. I mean, the women don't want to see that. They behind us. They don't want to see that. They didn't come here for that, to be looking at you. You messing their prayers all up, you know? But we got to think about that, having offensive things on your shirt. This Juma, you know? So, we, so when we come to Juma, we got to respect that as such. Allah says, O oh, children of Adam, wear your beautiful pearl at every time and place of prayer. You know? So, okay. Some of us may be coming off of work like I do sometimes. Okay, put a thobe in your car. Put a long T-shirt in your car, you know. Or if you're coming from, from, from out in the street, put something on that, that's representative that shows that, show that you have respect for your own self. And it shows that you have respect for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it also shows that you have respect for the women. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasnatan wa fil akhirati wa hasna wa kina ata binar Rabbana milan dunka wa hata wa haya lan min amri na wa shadda Subhana rabbika rabbil izati amma yasifun 
Wassalamu ala amrusulin walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Um, br- brothers, um, brothers and, um, and sisters, um, it was announced before we started talking that it's going to be a brief hold back immediately following the Juma um, concerning um, um, the, um, the uh, extension on the mass G. And um, so um, if you have a few minutes, hold back for that. And then um, we're also going to have a, um, a janazah today for one of our pioneer brothers. So those who can stay, alhamdulillah. I came to Salat. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashadu la ilaha illallah. Ashadu an Muhammad Rasulullah. Hayya la salat, hayya la salat. God, come to Salat, God, come to Salat. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Good. Good, okay. Allahu Akbar Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin Rahman Rahim مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبر وإياك نستعين إهدنا السيرات مستقيم سيرات الذين أنامت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام مين ذلك كتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويكمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم يوفكون والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك وبأخيرتهم يكنون أولئك على هدى من ربهم وأولئك هم المفلحون إن الذين كفروا سواء عليهم أن أنترتهم أم لم تنتهم لا يؤمنون ختم الله على قلوبهم وعلى سمهم وعلى أبصارهم غشاوة ولهم مذاب عظيم الله أكبر صيم الله لمن همده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبر وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم سيرات الذين أنعمت عليهم غير مغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كل هو الله أهد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر صيم الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I just want to um, give out a few announcements um, concerning what's going on in the community. Um, as we know, February is Heart Disease Month at Masjid Muhammad. So they are um, doing something um, on, on, your, on the, the, the health of your heart, um, and that's tomorrow, February, Saturday, February 28th, 2015, from 1 o'clock p.m. to 3 o'clock p.m. And, it, and it'll be upstairs. It'll be upstairs in the Musa. Inshallah. And um, the, um, the Nasim conference, you know, if, if you don't know, will be um, beginning on April 17th through the 19th. So it'll be from the 17th to the 19th. Um, the Minaret Players and Building Fund. Um, Thank you to those who have paid their pledges. Please honor your, ple your pledge and make payments online or at the business office. Um, and also, we want to keep the legacy of Imam W.D. Muhammad alive. So you can um, see Imam Muhammad's recordings. You can watch them on www.dctv.org. Or you can contact Ahmed Ansari at 202-320-8115. And um, you can also look at the community board for, for schedule, for the full schedule. And then we want to keep in our prayers Brother Jamal Abdul Salam, Amita Majun, um, Diane Montgomery, Jawan Muhammad, 
Norman Jackson, and Imam Kashif. And then also, we have a um, subscription drive contest. Um, the event dates are January 15th through April 15th, so this already started. But the purpose of, of this subscription drive is to facilitate an effort in support of Muslim Journal and to help keep our main national source of printed information available to the Muslim and to the broader community. The prize is a brand new flat screen TV, but the winner must sign up the most subscriptions, you know, to be paid in full. You know, and for more information, you can contact Muhammad Abdul Malik at 202-436-0513 or Hata Muhammad at 202-765-7008. Um, this, the things I'm reading to you is actually in your, um, in your, uh, in a bulletin. It's in a bulletin. All right. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Certainly thank Quran for the talk today. And if you if you look at the trouble that's coming from the world right now, it's because of how they are viewing the women. Look at look at how they view women and how they are treating women, you'll find out that's where all the problems are coming from. That's at the basic again, that's the, the, the paradise is at the foot of the of the mother, the women. So it's good to have them concentrate on the on the uh, on our sisters and our mothers. Uh, I want to do a brief hold back. Didn't want to wait till the next community meeting uh, because I think I told you all that we're trying to move forward on the expansion. Uh, the last proposal we had from from from. from